is a tractor here. So I would like to write a proposition that the pressure derivative is a kind of a you know tool. It's something interesting that is basically you know is going to map the tangent vectors onto the tangent vectors actually. This is what. So swallow a tangent vector and gives you a tangent vector. That's another interesting property of the pressure derivative actually. Okay. So this proposition is called the path property. Okay, we will use it also later. So you always need to have um, this notion. Okay. So imagine all this description, I'm not writing the assumptions on what I only I'm writing is this basically. Imagine I want to compute the tangent vector and on the path f composition p actually. So I need to do what? I can I can take the composition, differentiate it, and substitute it. Okay. But if you want to compute this, you have another way to compute it. Does this kind of a derivative can be obtained from the fresh derivative? So in other words, the fresh derivative is like the gene. Okay. And rest are the manifestations actually. So the answer is yes. So what you need to do? So take the tangent vector p of zero. P prime of zero, okay, and uh, compute the fresher derivative of A at the point A and substitute P prime of zero. So if you compute the fresher derivative of the F at the point A and substitute P prime of zero, which is the tangent vector on this curve, you're going to get the tangent vector on the curve actually. Okay, so the key thing that this property is telling you that fresher derivative is preserving the tangentness of a curve actually. Because the tangent things are mapped on the tangent actually. So preserving the you know the tangents actually. Okay. So how can I prove it? You know, it's just one line of proof actually. So if you want to compute F composition P operated on the zero, okay, we just saw a movement actually. So F composition P prime, F composition P is a path actually. So if you want to compute the derivative of a path, how to compute it? Through the fresher derivative? So you're going to compute it. You need to compute the fresher derivative at the point A. Okay. Composition. F composition P at the point A and substitute 1 into it. So you just saw it that if you want to find you know, the derivative of a path, so you have to compute the you know fresh derivative of the path and substitute one into it actually. Okay. And uh, this is same as so so I have so, so this is like the composition of the two function and you want to find the fresh derivative. So what you need to do? Chain rule. So let's apply the chain rule actually. So if you apply the chain rule, what you're gonna have? You're gonna have D F of F of um, f of what? Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's still something missing. So it should be b p of zero actually operated onto one, not a. Mm. P of zero. So this would be by definition what? So d. Huh? Operated on p into d of. So d operated on p of zero. Okay. Composed with d p of zero operated on the one actually. Let's recall. Okay. Let's compare it with something that we did. So if, if you want to compute the d f composition, the g composition f operated on the a, so what you need to do, you compute the derivative of the g at the point f of a. Okay. Compose with the d of the f and a, right? So if you if you do it, you have it. Sir, like this, the first one, the p of a will be one, sir. P of zero, but the p of zero is a. It becomes a. Okay. So this is what. So this becomes d f of a operated on the d p zero of one. So this would be. By definition, p prime of zero. Why this would be p prime of zero? Because 
Remember P prime of P is the dP of P operated on the one. So if, you, if you substitute zero here, you get it. So, so the fraction derivative of F evaluated at P operated on P prime of zero. So what I want to do, I want to Sir, what is the tenure vector? Yeah, tenure vector, yeah. So imagine you have a zero here, you can choose any value. Imagine you have a zero here, okay? And uh, mm -hmm. okay, zero not something necessarily, you can have any point. So imagine you have a zero here, and you operate P into it, so you're going to have a point, okay? You can treat it as P of zero, okay? So I want to compute the tangent vector here. So I need to do what? I need to differentiate P and evaluate zero into it, so that, that's going to give me the tangent vector. Or the velocity of the particle at that point is to be okay? So what I'm doing now, uh, I have a path and a tangent vector of it, so I have a continuous transformation. So I'm doing what? I'm taking this curve and doing something continuous with it actually. So turn it, turning it into a new curve actually, okay? So a curve turning into a new curve. Okay, so when you're gonna under so so like um, um, so, so what is the thing that is taking me from this you know path to this path so this is the F again so the F is taking me from the P of T to this F composition P of T okay so 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 the A would also be transformed on to a point B and this P of zero would be transformed on F composition P of zero. So if you want to find the derivative or the tangent vector at this point, you need to compute f composition p, p prime and substitute zero and it. So that will give you the tangent vector. My claim is another interesting that Fraché derivative is doing is this: that if you take this tangent vector, okay, what you can do. So in other words, p of zero is transformed to the p of zero to this point f composition p of zero through f. So I said, do we have some quantity that is transforming this tangent vector onto the this tangent vector? The answer is yes. The fraction derivative of the a function at the point, that point a is going to be the downwards. So the tangent vector onto the transformed path, the new path, can be computed as the take the tangent vector onto your original path and substitute it into the fraction derivative. So the fraction derivative is going to swallow the vector on this curve and it's going to spit out the vector on you know this 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 curve actually okay so it's gonna um, okay uh, so you have you have it. so how I'm gonna do it so f composition p prime of zero is this and so I'm doing it so I'm using this definition that if you have any path and its derivative the derivative of the path can be seen as the fresh derivative of the path evaluated at one point. So now instead of P of T, I have F composition P. So it doesn't make any difference at all. Okay? So in this identity, on the place of P, I am substituting F composition P. And substituting T equal to 0, so you get it. Okay? And then here I am applying chain rule. So when you apply the chain rule, this means that if you want to compute the DF composition P of 0 at 1, this is same as that you compute the fresh derivative of the f at the point p of 0 and then compose it with the fresh derivative of the path you know uh, at point, point 0 on the path 1 actually. Okay? Now this df p of 0, so p of 0 is a, so this becomes df of a. Then this guy is what? So in this formula this substitute t equal to 0. t equal to 0. So what are you going to get? So the p of 0 is the fraction derivative of, the, of p at the time 0 operating on to what do you call 1. So, I can, so, so you have it and on the place of this I can write this. Composition is that this is equal to that this transformation is operated on this. And I am replacing this by this p prime of 0. So you have it. Okay? So another interesting thing that the fresh derivative is doing is that it, if you have a continuous path and you continuously transform it, the fresh derivative is going to transform the tangent vector, you know, from the curve to the curve vector. So that's an amazing thing actually that fresh derivative is doing. 
you know, you're going to see the more miracles of fresh derivative when you do when you're going to do either the Einstein theory of general relativity because you know, it's it's the fertile thing working there or at least differential geometry. Okay. Yes. So, when we have a composition of Rashi derivative, we have a composition of Rashi derivative 1.9. Just compare it with this. Just compare it with this. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, I mean, if you wish, you can put H here as well. So, you can put another H here, and then you can say that, okay, this H is basically here. Okay. Here and touch here, and then complete, completely compare what you do. So take G as F and F as P. You have it. You just reflect over it and you can. It's not difficult, just leave. Yes, sir. Here we have we can't because we, what we have done, we have proved this identity. That if you want to compute the time derivative of the path, you can obtain it from the pressure derivative. So what you can do is compute the pressure derivative of the path and substitute one into it. And that is going to give you the time derivative of the path. Okay, so the one is going to be there. So so if this one would be a vector, we will see, now we will define what you call the directional derivative, you will see that it's giving you the fresh derivative, of, you know, so it's like computing the changing in this particular direction actually. So yeah, it's hard to conceive one as vector, but we know that the scalars are vectors as well. Why? Because R is a vector space. Yeah. Isn't R a vector of space? So it's a vector of space. So scalars are interestingly vectors in abstract manner actually. Okay. So, you know, so you are computing the change in the path but in the direction of one. But you know, obviously you can ask what is the meaning of having a direction of one actually, or one is the scale. Okay. But you can keep it as a technical fact actually. The okay. consequence of our definition. Okay. Not everything can be interpreted in a usual way. So this is another as I said, up to here, what we are doing, so um, you know, we are um, pressure derivative here, I'm doing amazing things with us. So let's see that what other interesting things the pressure derivative can do for us actually. Okay. All right, so <coughs> let me define something what you call the directional derivative. Directional derivative. You see, there are lots of kind of derivatives, but you know, if the function is nice, all these derivatives are coming out of the single derivative. Which Basically, okay. Let me, let me put the definition and then we can talk more about it. Otherwise, we will be saying that abstract nothing comes from it. Asad, where is Asad? Asad, So, suppose, uh, suppose F is a map from U to RM, okay, where U where u is, uh, is a subset of Rn and it's open. Okay. Let A is a fixed point from the domain, so it's a fixed point. Okay. And uh, x is a map, uh, it is a vector in Rn. Okay. So, so the picture is saying if I make it, so you have a, what do you say, 
surface or maybe a map, F or the graph of the map, while this is the domain, what we call U, from this U, you are choosing the point A. So, so what I would like to define, I would like to define um, the directional derivative. Okay? So imagine you are sitting at A, okay? And from the you know, point of view of uh, uh, you know surface or you know the map F, you are sitting at F of A. Okay? And you want to compute the change in this F, but not in all directions, but in a specific direction X actually. In a specific direction X. Okay, so I'm, I'm interested in computing the change in the function, but in this direction of mine that I'm interested in. So therefore I will call you know this change as the directional change actually, or the directional derivative, because I want to compute the derivative in a in a specific direction. Okay, so directional derivative is what? Uh, directional derivative of f at a point a along x okay if it exists obviously exists if the following thing exists the following limit exists if this so I'm going to denote it by this so it's my motion for the directional derivative is this. So I am computing the derivative, directional derivative of f at a but in the direction of the x actually. So this is my notation. So directional derivative of f at a okay, in the direction of the vector x actually. And if you want to compute it, what you need to do you know, consider a line that passes through this point A, okay, and uh, you know, and, and and goes through this vector x, okay. So how you can find the equation? So so have you learned this that if you have been given a point in a space and a vector, how to pass a point line through it? So what you can do is this, is that, okay. Take the point A, so you have point A, okay, and take the vector x and multiply it with something. Something what? So, so scalar. You know, scalar actually. So A plus T x actually, where the T is arbitrary. Okay? So the T is T can be anything actually. T x. Okay? So A plus T x is roughly expression that, that can represent what you call uh, line. And then, so if you want to, in other words, if you want to compute the change in the function, that's obviously you need to transform all these onto, so a plus tx is here actually. So I need to send this onto the surface, okay, so it's going to be what? So it's going to be, it's no more going to be a line, but it's going to be some patch actually in the direction of x. Okay. As I would like to compute this, so I need to do what? So, so f of a plus tx, so a was my original position and tx is like, you know, my position at, you know, at any instant, you know, at, en at any point actually in the direction of the x and subtract f of a where I was previously, so my, you know, my previous position on the surface, you know, uh, subtracted from my new position, okay, divided by T, okay, and consider the limit T goes to 0, okay. So when T goes to 0, what does it mean? You know, you are really in the neighborhood of this point actually. Okay, so I'm really neighborhood of, of, of this point, but I'm on this line. Okay, and this line is the direction of the x. Okay, so in other words, y x is just a way. So it's, it's something from geometry. So I'm assuming that you know a little bit of geometry. If not, we can get into the lines and the planes and you know, their equation. 
situation that we are in. But I'm assuming, assuming that we know it and this much I don't know. I mean, if you don't know, it's really just a state like we know and maybe we can discuss them first and then we can think about it. So, in other words, so it's, it's pretty much a standard thing in vector calculus that if you give me a point and a vector, you can find a line that passes through it. Okay? So, if I want to find, you know, uh, the change in the direction, okay, so again we can have, so, so, so x is a direction basically on the path and I know that fresh derivative can, you know, send the directions onto the directions actually, so, so when I am going to basically transform this curve onto this surface, so there will be a curve actually, not necessarily a straight line obviously, but it could, it, it could be a curve actually, okay. And when I'm saying that I'm, I'm interested in, you know, finding uh, the change on the f in the direction of the x, so I'm basically saying that, you know, if I am moving onto the image of this line onto the surface, how does the change is going to be? Okay, how does the change is going to be? So in other words, I'm perturbing, perturbing a little bit okay from the f of a onto the surface but in a fixed direction that's what essentially i'm saying okay so if you are moving from the point in a fixed direction the question is what would be the derivative and how does the change would be there so if you want to compute it that's what you have to do okay that's what you have to do anyway when you will when you will think carefully about it you will basically see it otherwise we can so again, I mean, if you think that there are things in the vector geometry that you need to refresh, please let me know so that we can discuss and then we can, uh, you know, discuss the other things. Otherwise, basically, you will be kind of just believing on me, whatever what I'm saying. So. There are a lot of things in geometry. What are the requirements in these type of that we should cover in geometrical portions. Yeah, at least you should know how to how to find the equation of a line and an equation of a you know plane and equation of a you know normal vector and so all all these basic things actually. You know, uh, you know, so plane then line that is these these are the basic things that we should have. Anyway, and otherwise we can give a quick refresher actually. Okay. So what does what does what does the definition is definition is saying pretty much simple you were here before and then you moved onto the f but along line a plus t x so a plus t x is a line here but f of a plus t x is a curved line here because I don't know whether f contains curve or not but okay assume it at the moment that it's, it's a curved line okay and I'm saying that I want to compute the change, you know, roughly uh, in F, uh, the derivative of the F at the point A, but along this line, actually. okay, uh, along this transformed direction. Okay. So what you need to do, you just need to compute the limit. So if the, if the limit exists, then you have the fresh derivative. You have to keep one thing in head, this limit does not necessarily always exist. Actually. So directional derivative is something that sometimes really exists and sometimes does not exist. Okay. Sir, so, so what does it mean that uh, a direction that does not exist? It means the way we want to move, it means the function does not allow us to move in this yes, direction. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, imagine, imagine the function is not defined on the line. Or maybe you know, you are you you are going in. In a, in, in a black hole actually, you know. <laughs> so, you, so you are choosing a line which when transformed goes inside the black hole actually. What are you going to say? What is the change in this direction, you know, when you are going to the black hole? You are going to say, you know, I have no idea. <laughs> so it's not defined. Okay. So you, you can have a crazy function. So in, the, in other words, for example, you know, where the function is not smooth, you know, you can have chances that the you know function function is not differentiable, or maybe the one of the such thing is is is, is um, one of such things, <coughs> or you know either fresh derivative or directional derivative would not exist. Okay. So if it is smooth, 
everything is fine. You can always find fresh and dairy